a poem about love now for you called Casual Sex with a Mutant Killer Sloth. I was awoken that morning by loud incessant groaning. I went downstairs and threw open the French windows. A limbless beggar lay stumps akimbo on the patio. He moaned and he groaned and he uttered guttural curses to the vile pink froth that bubbled forth from ruptured lungs. What, he said, are you doing here? This is private property and you are therefore trespassing. He begged my forgiveness, then in coughs and painful wheaties, he proceeded to explain that a passing pack of police cadets had seized him from his invalid car, beaten him to red jelly with the blunt edges of their credit cards for throwing him bodily over the wall to land with a smack on the bar in the barbecue moat from whence he had crawled, and could he have a glass of water, please? Now I am not a violent man, but while standing on the wretch's throat, I recessed his testicles with a single slip of thrust. I said, your sort makes me sick. You seem to think that those of us with property exist, merely to pander to the idle whims and fancies of the work shy and the limbless. Well, you'll find no sympathy here, squire. Pick yourself up, get on your bike, learn to stand your own two feet, pull your socks up, tie your own shoelaces and stand to attention when addressed by your social superior. Do you know how much I pay to sustain your kith, kin and kind? Enough to keep an entire factory in action, the entire factory in Singapore manufacturing action in Wolf's Joy Do you know, start again. Do you know how much I pay to sustain your kith, kin and kind? Enough to keep an entire factory manufacturing action men in Singapore in wood shavings of water for a week. And furthermore, at that moment, my sentence was aborted in a series of blood spluttering grunts as I found myself suddenly impaled from the rock hard sexual member of a mutant killer sloth from the year 2000. 2014 AD, which, whilst having a furtive wank in Mr. Radioactive Ruins of futuristic downtown New Pudsey, was suddenly seized by a freak distortion in the space time continuum, with the end result that his penis and my torso were now occupying the same space at the same time. As I hung there dangling, I could not help but be fascinated by the huge sobbing purple head of the monstrous member that erupted from my smashed chest cavity like some diabolical fungi as I felt its hot breath into my head. As I felt its furry balls rubbing against the backs of my thighs, I found myself once again in awe of the diversity and the complexity of the good Lord's creation. For does not the good book say it is easier by far for the engorged sexual member of a mutant killer sloth in the year 2014 AD to puncture the stomach wall of a still breathing poet than it is for a limbless beggar to gain succour at the door of the bourgeoisie? You poor take courage, you rich be warned, for the Lord moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform.